My final thoughts before the Bills face the Raiders, an injury update with Dr. Kyle Trimble of Banged Up Bills, and my five predictions for Sunday afternoon are all coming your way today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, folks, it's the last conversation that we're going to have before the Bills face the Raiders in Week Two, as the Bills search for their first win of the season, the home opener, and we're certainly looking for the Bills to bounce back. And in this final conversation, I want to give you some final thoughts about the game. We'll talk to Dr. Kyle Trimble of Banged Up Bills about all the injuries and then five predictions for Sunday afternoon. The big phrase here for me is bounce back. How do the Bills bounce back? And most importantly, Josh Allen. I studied that Jets game pretty in depth, and I came away encouraged with a lot of what this team wants to be. A lot of their strategy, a lot of their personnel usage, I came away very discouraged with Josh Allen. And there's a piece of me that feels like if my biggest concern right now is Josh Allen, that feels like a pretty good thing because we have a really good sample size of Josh Allen playing high-level quarterback in this league and being the reason why Bills, why the Bills win games. And for Josh, what's interesting is because I feel like what's around him is as good as it's ever been for the Bills, particularly on offense. And for him to adapt and realize that he doesn't have to do as much. He's got playmakers. He's got some pass-catching running backs. Just go out there and play ball. Do the special things that make you special, but just play smart football. It's that simple. He's done it before in the past. He can do it. And it's about bouncing back and getting this Jets performance out of our systems, right? It is... It's been a challenging week to just hear criticism for Josh Allen. And like I said at the beginning of the week, he deserves all of it. He's earned it. This is that next opportunity to bounce back and just get the season on track and hopefully make a lot of the comments that were made over the last week look real silly. Now, one thing I'll mention here is about turnovers, right? That's the big storyline for the Bills. Four turnovers against the Jets. Josh Allen, turnover-prone quarterback. The most co- the most turnovers in the league over whatever the last few years. The Bills have shown the ability to bounce back after having a high-volume turnover game. So the Bills had four turnovers against the Jets in Week 1, just like they had Against the Rams in week one last year, they had four turnovers in that 2022 season opener. The next game, against the Titans, they didn't turn it over at all. Wasn't their only four turnover game in 2022. They had another one. Four turnovers against the Vikings in week 10. In the next game against the Cleveland Browns, they didn't turn it over at all. And so the Bills have shown this ability to quickly correct things. Now, you want to see... Less four turnover games for sure. But I like how in that immediate moment afterwards, the Bills have shown that ability to get things corrected. And so we need that trend to continue this week against the Raiders where the Bills are heavy favorites. And the easiest way to allow a team that you're supposed to handle to stick around is to give them extra possession. So got to value the football every week. And I mean, you could say it's important against great teams and it's important against teams you're supposed to beat. Got to value the football. It's always important, but the bills have shown the ability to bounce back and that needs to continue. 
Now, more specifically with this game against the Raiders, the dynamic on my mind as this game's about to happen is how the Raiders want to run the football and how the Bills defend the run. And I think the Bills have obviously shown a tendency to get gashed in the run game with some explosive runs, which I think skews a lot of their overall perception of the run defense because so much of it is good, and then they just get gashed for these long, explosive plays. Well, this Raiders team, how they run the football, presents a unique challenge because it's a power run scheme, gap-oriented, big-time running back in Josh Jacobs, who's 5'10", 220 pounds, had over 1,600 yards last year, really good back, and they use the fullback, Jacob Johnson, 6'3", 250 pounds. I mean, that's a lot of beef that they're going to put at you. They got some big dudes on the offensive line as well. They want to create displacement, get off the ball, move you off the ball, and behind that physical run blocking is Johnson and Jacobs. Nearly 500 pounds worth of dudes coming at you. And how do the Bills choose to deal with this? Because one thing that is absolutely true and characteristic of the Bills' front is that it's small. The Bills have a very small front. And particularly when it comes to the second level. Now, they have some bigger defensive tackles, Jordan Phillips, Puna Ford. Those guys are bigger guys. But two of your guys, two of your starters up front, Ed Oliver, who's 287 pounds, and Leonard Floyd, who's 244 pounds. Now, my concerns aren't as much with your down line. I'm really not concerned about those down linemen. It's the back seven. Where your starting linebackers, Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard, they're both under 225 pounds. Milano, 223. Bernard, 224. Small linebackers. And we know that the Bills are a base nickel defense. They're going to play five defensive backs. So whether it's Taron Johnson at 192 pounds or Taylor Rapp at 208 pounds, you don't have much size. And then, of course, your safeties. Hyde and Poyer right at about upper 190s in terms of their weight. And so last week we saw the Bills use Taylor Rapp for about 20 snaps on defense and took Taron Johnson out of the game. And, you know, that's one of the wrinkles to their scheme. How do they match up this week knowing that it's a physical downhill rushing offense and you have a small back or a small spine of your defense, if you will, when it comes to the B and C levels with your linebackers and I guess your safeties, I don't think the safeties aren't necessarily small, but in compare, you know, when you bring it all together and you figure out that, hey, you've got two sub 225 linebackers and that third guy that you're going to play in the box is either Taylor Rapp or Taron Johnson, you're just not going to have a lot of size. And now you'll have quickness, that's for sure, but you're not going to have a lot of size. So how do they match up? Do they, do they use Tyrell Dotson in the Taylor Rapp role instead of Taylor Rapp like we watched last week? Is Do those snaps go to Tyrell Dotson, or do they continue to roll with Taylor Rapp and ask him to play in the box? So it's going to be an interesting dynamic for how this all plays out uh, this coming week, where it's just stylistically a very different um, offense, and so I'm curious to see how the Bills counter that. And the last thing I'll say in my final thoughts, it's Josh Jacobs, Max Crosby, Devontae Adams. That's the star power of the team. Those are the difference makers, and then I think they have some intriguing players, but those are the guys that really move the needle for the Raiders when it comes to their premier talent. Josh Jacobs, Max Crosby, Devontae Adams. So we talked about Josh Jacobs and how he fits into that run game and how I think that presents a challenge for the Bills. Devontae Adams, one of the best receivers in the game. That's an obvious challenge for the Bills. But Max Crosby, I mean, of all the challenges that the Raiders face, that's the one that scares me. That's the guy that can be a game wrecker. He's going up against Spencer Brown. I think it's an absolute nightmare matchup for the Bills. And we've seen the Bills in the past go up against elite defensive linemen, and they don't really adjust much. They trust their players to make their blocks and make their assignments, but that's not the case here. The Bills have to help Spencer Brown against Max Crosby. And the good news is the Raiders don't have much else in that defensive line outside of Max Crosby, so you should feel comfortable giving him some extra attention, widening his paths, putting tight ends, putting – the uh, backs in protection over there. There's things that you're going to have to do here or else Spencer Brown's going to have a long day and it's going to it's going to hurt the Bills offense. And so how they play against Max Crosby is going to be critical. But those the three difference makers for the Raiders, 
Josh Jacobs, Max Crosby, Devonte Adams, and I'm very curious to see how the Bills match up against them. All right, folks, I'm looking forward to the game on Sunday, and I want to invite you to join the Lockdown Bills subtext community. We started doing this several months ago. It's been awesome. So many people have joined. I'm having a blast. I love the one-on-one text message conversations that I get to have with you. But something that people are really enjoying that have already joined the subtext community are the live reaction texts throughout the game. I send a lot of texts out, just my thoughts as it's happening to you right to your cell phone. So would love for you to join and be part of that. Check it out. It's, um, again, the Lockdown Bill subtext community. If you want to join, there's a link in today's show notes. So if you're watching on YouTube or whatever podcasting platform you're listening on, click on the show notes. You'll see a link to join and you can be part of the Lockdown Bill subtext community. Get my live reaction. Get my immediate reaction to all Bill's news. Um, one-on-one text conversations throughout the week. It's super cool. I'm having a blast. Would love for you to be part of it. So check it out. Again, a link in today's show notes to join. All right. In just a moment, we're going to talk to Dr. Kyle Trimble of Banged Up Bills about the injuries in this game. But first, I need to tell you about game time. Buying tickets to your favorite events, it shouldn't be stressful. But you know what? Sometimes it is. Game time is here for you. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They got killer deals on last-minute tickets. They have a best price guarantee. And so with all that, you can stop stressing over the tickets, and you can start getting excited for the fun that you're going to have. The app is awesome, super easy to use. They have flash deals, last-minute tickets. They give you an image of seat view so you know exactly what to expect when you get to the venue. Great prices. It is awesome. So check it out. Snag the tickets. Without distress with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm joined now by Kyle Trimble. He's a doctor of physical therapy. He runs BangedUpBills.com. You can follow him on Twitter at BangedUpBills. He joins us each week to get us ready for the upcoming Bills game from an injury perspective. And Kyle, sir, not a whole lot to get into today. The only player on the Buffalo Bills injury report is Mitch Morse, the starting center, who's practiced in full all week and is listed as having a finger injury. So the floor is yours, sir. Tell us about Mitch Morse and everything we need to know about his finger injury. He's going to be fine, guys. Uh, He practices full all week, like you said. He suffered the... Uh, finger injury. It was either to his uh, ring finger, excuse me, his index finger or middle finger um, on a routine block late in the third quarter for about four minutes left. And you couldn't see exactly what happened because his back was to the broadcast camera, but he came up, shook his hand out. It looked like he hyperextended the fingers a little bit or jammed them. They go for x-rays, but he was fine. Um, he also said that he had injured him previously, which we were unaware of, but the fact is it's non-stepping hand as he's right-handed really makes this injury a non-factor heading into the game. Well, uh, music to my ears. This is what we hope for. When you and I have conversations, we hope to talk about as little as possible. That's the case in in this situation. I think the one question that I had was, is this a snapping hand injury? Is it a non-snapping hand injury? It's a non-snapping hand injury, which, you know, makes it even less of a concern to me. Is there anything else with the Bills? I mean, I saw Jordan Phillips was on the ground a little bit um, during that Jets game. I thought I saw Greg Rousseau shaking out his hand. Is there anything else here to talk about or anything that you have information on? That's pretty much like what you said there. So uh, Jordan Phillips did look like he got the wind knocked out and he got tripped up and fell on his right shoulder because he got twisted around, which he was coming off his right shoulder uh, rotator cuff repair, which always is a concern, but he was able to come back in. No problems with that. And then uh, Greg Rousseau, this was very early in the third quarter. He was trying to sack Zach Wilson was behind him. Didn't quite get to him. And Can't really see what happened to his uh, hand, but he either hit the ground or hit a helmet or something. He came up, also shake his hand out, but he also did not have any problems. Outside maybe some tape, you know, to body tape it, I don't see there's any issues for either of those guys heading into Sunday. How about Connor McGovern and Micah Hyde? Two players we talked about last week uh, knew that Micah Hyde had a back thing. We knew that Connor McGovern had a knee thing. Not that there was concerns that they wouldn't play. They played, but... As you observe their movement, was there anything about them that appeared to be off, or do they look like they're moving as they should? They're both looking pretty good there. I actually went back that McGovern uh, looked the offensive line play beat, but you know the guys on the defense also get paid too, so they're going to make plays and, and beat them. But it wasn't like his play was suffering as the game went on. 
to hold his own. Uh, I'm sure he was hurting at some point, but we're not going to see that unless there was something really big that happened. So it was very promising to see that that original injury that we saw him have have happened wasn't as severe as potentially could have could have been. And then as for Micah Hyde, he left with cramps, missed one play at the very, very end of the game. But I didn't see any limitations with him. And even with the back designation last, he was still moving around pretty good. So it might have just been more precaution than anything. What about the Raiders side of thing? I know that uh, Jacoby Myers has actually been ruled out for this game with a concussion, and he had a really good opening game for the Raiders, a couple of touchdowns, led the team in receiving. Is there anything else to know about Myers or any other players with the Raiders? So Myers, uh, like, like you said, he was ruled out already. Uh, he was a do not participate on Wednesday, which was a strong indicator that he was not going to play on Saturday, on Sunday. Um, I had gone through and looked, and this is Bill's content, keep in mind, or Bill's uh, injuries. Only four of the guys who had had a do not that first day of practice went on to play in the game that Sunday. So they all went do not participate, limited practice, full practice. So once Myers had that do not participate on that Thursday, it was almost a given that I could play on Sunday and then Friday's injury report was just more of a formality. So they'll be missing him. Uh, they'll be getting DeAndre Carter back, though. He was out. Uh, I mean, he played a little bit last week. Snaps. He's dealing with a knee injury. Uh, Trayvon Morig is dealing with a thumb injury. He was limited a little bit this week. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is dealing with an ankle injury, but he said he was fine. But keep in mind, he was coming off injury from the offseason. So that might be something you know, Garoppolo starts struggling. And then Devontae Adams had a foot injury, but he just had more of a maintenance rest day on Wednesday and practice a full Thursday, Friday. And he'll be the one guy to really watch out for um, in the offense uh, come Sunday. Well, Kyle, sign me up for conversations just like this the rest of the way. The Bills are a healthy football team through the beginning of week two. Hopefully we have as slim of an injury report to reflect on next week. Dr. Kyle Trimble, thanks as always for your time and your expertise. Thank you. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk things through. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can help take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you do is fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, and then if you need to, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Folks, got to tell you about Price Picks. It is awesome. It is the best, easiest, fastest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is awesome. It's just you versus the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros, including Sharks. It's just you against the numbers. All you do, you pick two or more players, you pick more or less on the projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long. You can make an entry in under 60 seconds, and withdrawals are super, super quick and super, super easy. You know, I love watching football. It's even more exciting when I have an entry going into games. It just makes it that much more fun. So go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL. Use our promo code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, let's uh, give you my predictions for Sunday afternoon. I have five predictions for how I think this game will unfold. I didn't do so hot last week. We'll see if I can bounce back with some better predictions. I'll start with this one. Number one, I predict three sacks or more for the Bills in this game. And so I did a little math. I'm not much of a math guy, but if you average three sacks a game, that's 51 in the season, and that's a healthy amount of sacks for a team to get. And so I think the Bills can get three or more sacks of Jimmy Garoppolo, keeping in mind he wasn't sacked at all in week one. But I think there's some matchups that I really like for the Bills' defensive line against their offensive line in terms of pass rush against their pass blocking. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a very sackable quarterback. He held on to the football for 2.9 seconds last week, and I think with Leonard Floyd and Ed Oliver and 
Greg Rousseau, I think you're going to see some production there. You may even see some second level production as well. I think the Bills um, didn't blitz quite as much as I thought they would against the Jets. You could see maybe they'll dial that up a little bit more against the Raiders. So put me down for three sacks for the Bills uh, on Sunday after Jimmy Garoppolo was not sacked a single time in week one when he faced the Denver Broncos. Number two, I am predicting Josh Allen accounts for three or more touchdowns in this game. Maybe it'll be two passing and one rushing, two rushing, one passing, three passing. Who knows? But I think Josh Allen accounts for at least three touchdowns in this game. And, um, you know, the Bills only scored one touchdown last week. One touchdown. Are you kidding me? Um, I'm excited to see them get things on track here offensively. I think this is a very favorable matchup for the Bills. Um, and they need to execute. And well, I'll be real concerned if they they don't, right? We'll have some hard conversations next week if things don't go well. But uh, Josh Allen put me down for three or more touchdowns for the Bills starting quarterback this week. Number three, I think that at least three Bills receivers will have at least 50 receiving yards in the game. Um, I think there's going to be some opportunities to throw the football against the Raiders. Marcus Peters, Jacorian Bennett, I think that's a cornerback tandem that you can challenge. Their linebackers are pretty underwhelming to me, and I think there's going to be some opportunities to work your ancillary components of the offense. Um, I think you're going to have some passing production, and I, I can see maybe maybe even three guys having 75 or more yards, but I think there's production to be had on this team, and I think at least three receivers have at least 50 yards for the Bills. Uh, I think – Diggs is one of them. I think Kincaid could have a big game this week. Certainly Gabe Davis, certainly Dawson Knox, James Cook even catching the football. I think there's going to be some productive offensive players for the Bills catching the ball. I also think they're going to have a productive running back. I'm Put me down for 100 rushing yards for James Cook in this football game. Um, one of my biggest takeaways from watching the Jets All-22 tape was how close the Bills were to breaking some explosive runs. I thought some of the run game concepts were really good. I just felt like maybe some of the timing wasn't quite there. And, and maybe a lot of that has to do with that Jets front and how quick they are and how disciplined they are and how much they understand their rules and how to fit the run. And they, they just play so sound. I don't know that you're going to see that type of consistency from the Raiders. Um, I don't like their linebackers. I don't like their defensive line. I think the Bills will create some displacement and get, get James Cook going quite a bit in this game. So Put me down for 100 rushing yards for James Cook against the Raiders on Sunday afternoon. And then lastly, I do think the Bills win this game. I think they get to one and one. And then, you know, we'll focus on the Washington Commanders and the Bills' path to getting to two and one. And then, you know, we'll go from there. But I think the season gets on track. I, I mean, I didn't want to parlay it and say they cover the spread. It's nine and a half. That's a lot of points. But I can see a decisive Bills win coming. Um, home opener. You know, this team is hungry to get back on the field and um, get get that game out of our system. I, I feel like not just from fans' perspective, it's the team as well. They, they want to get back out there and play uh, to their standard, and I think you see it happen. I think the Bills win this game. I think they can score more than 30 points for sure. I think they can keep the Raiders under 20 and take care of their business and get to one and one, and we can have a bit of a reset and um, have a much more enjoyable week talking about our beloved Buffalo Bills. So put me down for a Bills win on Sunday. So my, my five predictions, three sacks for the Bills defense, Josh Allen accounts for three or more touchdowns, three receivers with at least 50 yards and a hundred rushing yards or more for James Cook. And of course a Bills win. All right, folks. So a lot of content coming up still right after the game, I'm going live on Bleacher Report. So make sure you don't miss that. Then we're going to get to work on locked on bills. And then of course we have six episodes per week uh, between games. That's our format this year. And so number one is the instant game reaction. Then the All-22 review, which has been awesome. I've loved doing that, and the feedback has been so good. Then we have th a herd mentality. We have crossover Thursday, the full primer where I you know, really break down the Bills' opponent in depth, and then our final thoughts, injuries, and predictions. So six episodes between every Bills game. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you don't miss anything. Would love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills, and I look forward to catching up with you again after the game.